I want to demonstrate how to place the unloading harness on in a standing position. Uh, first of all, I just want to put the, uh, the top piece of the harness on like a vest. And we're going to go ahead and then position the waist belt appropriately. So you want the waist belt at a level that it catches underneath the ribs um, and also the lower edge of the uh, uh, harness is catching just over the top of the iliac crest area. So we're going to go ahead and attach the clips here, buckles on the front, and snug those up a little bit to start with. You can see the buckles are on opposite sides here to give a little more um, even pressure. Um, one thing we want to make sure of is there's two seatbelt buckles that are hanging down from the front of the harness here. Um, these seatbelt buckles, you want to make sure those are at or in front of the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. So we want to shift those a little farther forward. So we'll just go ahead and turn around and try to do that. You'll notice we have adjustments on the back of the harness as well. These are using what's called a ladder lock. So we're going to loosen those up a little bit by just pulling out on those to give us a little more room in the back. So now, go ahead and turn back around. We can pull the front a little bit closer together. And this just brings those buckles a little farther forward. And we also want to make sure that the length on the shoulder straps is appropriate. We can lengthen these by pulling up on the orange webbing, or we can shorten those by just pulling down on the black webbing so they stay in place. So these look good here. Go ahead and turn back around. So we're going to tighten these back buckles up too. So let's just go ahead and snug those up. Usually a kind of a quick movement helps to snug those a little bit better. So we've got our three buckles here that gives us a little bit of more conforming fit. So go ahead and turn back around one more time. Good. So that's how we want to fit the top piece of the harness. Now we're going to apply the lower piece of the harness. So the first thing we're going to do with that is go ahead and turn back around for me. And we're going to take the two black buckles here that are hanging from the harness and these there's thigh cuffs that are marked right and left on the inside of the thigh cuff. We're going to attach those to the back buckles. We're going to adjust the length of these, shorten those up so that this red strap we call the gluteal fold strap is going to sit just beneath the gluteal fold. We're going to take the thigh cuffs here, the right and left thigh cuffs, and bring them through the thighs Good. Now you can go ahead and turn back around. We'll just turn sideways like that. Great. And take the two inch buckle and attach it and snug. Just take up the slack. We don't want to snug too firmly on those. Okay. And now we'll do the same thing with the left thigh cuff. And then we're going to take our red gluteal fold straps and take the red buckles and clip them into the front. Snug firmly. Snug firmly. This is going to hold the front of the harness down. And go ahead and turn around one more time. And lastly, we can just take up any remaining slack in the back two buckles and make sure that those are in an appropriate, uh, 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 have an appropriate amount of play just so that it doesn't restrict too much hip flexion. Okay. I'd like to demonstrate how to now place the unloading harness on in a sitting position. Um, so some of the things are similar, some things are a little different. So first of all, you want to make sure that you lengthen these shoulder straps as far as they can go. That will allow you to get it around the patient and their arms through the uh, shoulder straps much more easily. The other thing you're going to want to do is somewhat preset the back straps. So over time, you'll try on arrow, you get better of estimating approximate circumference of the person's waist. And so I've got these lengthened to a position that I think is going to be appropriate for her that the front bu belt buckles will come around her appropriately. So we're going to go ahead and just place this through your arm here. And we're going to have you lean forward. And we're going to stuff this down and get this around your other arm here. Go ahead and lean forward as far as you can. Good. So if you can get your patient to lean forward as far as they can, that's going to be optimum. And get that harness as low as you can. And if you've got removable armrests that you can take away, then that would be great too to get those out of the way. So now we can go ahead and come back around. And we're going to go ahead and tighten your front belt buckles. You want to get this belt as low as you can possibly get it in a sitting position because it will come up a little bit when they come to standing. So we got this nice and low. Clipping in our two front buckles here. We want to get these as snug as possible. 
We can also have you lean forward and I can snug up some of these back buckles too if I can get access to them. If not, we'll do that when she stands up. Go ahead and lean back. I'm going to take a little bit of slack up at the shoulders. I want to leave a little bit of play because as she stands up, those are going to, those are going to take up some slack as well. So now for putting on the lower piece of the unloading harness, we've got a right and a left thigh cuff. And we're going to want to hold those in our right and left hands when we get ready to place those underneath the, the, the patient. So, so I've got them here, right and left. You want the right, the R and the L laid out as they should be. So we're going to take the right leg, we're going to lift it up, and we're going to slide that cuff. And we're going to try to get it up as far on the thigh as we can. And go ahead and clip it in. And just snug it up, just take the slack up, not too tight. Then I'm going to pull my red strap here. And I might have to turn this cuff a little bit to give me some slack. So now here's my left, and it's going to come underneath the left. Then this cuff's going to come up between the legs. We're going to go ahead and tighten that up. Again, not too tight, and just get it as high as you can. The higher, the better initially. Now we're going to take our red seatbelt buckle clips and clip these into the front seatbelt buckles. Want to make sure those front seatbelt the ASIS are slightly in front. Again, not super tight because as they stand up, that'll restrict their hip, hip extension. And then we'll get that somewhat tight there. Good. So then once we're ready, If your patient is now hooked up to an overhead suspension system of any type, um, you can have that hooked up at this point. And then as they go to come up to standing with this, the last thing you're going to do is have to clip in the back buckles. So go ahead and stand up for me. Good. And I'm going to have you turn around, but in reality I'd be right here doing this. I would then lastly clip the back buckles and cinch those up quickly. And if I need any more tightness on the back straps, we can get a last little bit of tightening there and then keeping that harness in good position where it won't ride up.